today, the name Duke is synonymous with a great university, hospital and power company. But it all started with tobacco hung in a corn crib. A few yards behind the visitor center at the Duke Homestead historic site, you step back into the world of the 1800s. In 1864, Washington Duke joined the Confederate Army. He was captured by Union soldiers and placed in an internment camp in Richmond. After the Civil War, he was transported to Newburn and walked the 135 miles back home. There was not much left, but a few stalks of tobacco left hanging in the barn. Really, this is where it all started. This building is where, when Washington Duke returned from the Civil War, he started his business, W. Duke and & Sons, and his youngest sons, um, Benjamin and really James Duke, turned that into the American Tobacco Company, which grew into the largest tobacco manufacturing company in the world. So this house was built in 1852, the same year Washington met and married his second wife, Artilia. They moved here with his two sons. They had three more children here in this house. It was just a four-room farmhouse to start with, two rooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs for the kids. Tobacco was a profitable but labor-intensive crop. The Dukes turned it into a family enterprise. Washington Duke was at the right place and the right time, as tobacco was a thriving cash crop, and Durham was becoming a major center for tobacco production. Washington Duke's sons were the ones taking cured tobacco leaf and processing it into pipe tobacco. His daughter Mary was hand sewing cotton pouches and pasting labels onto the packaging for the product, while Washington rode around selling it. Also living here in the home with the family, we believe, was Caroline, who was the only enslaved person that the Duke family owned. Washington Duke purchased her in 1855. We think she slept upstairs with the children. She was separated from her mother and sister at that time. As the Duke family prospered, the story is picked up by Duke archivist Valerie Gillespie, who takes us to the Duke family's final resting place in Duke Chapel. So in 1874, the Dukes were producing 125,000 pounds of tobacco a year. It had outgrown the homestead. So Washington Duke moved to Durham and built a factory here, as well as a Queen Anne style house that's no longer in Durham, but the pictures are really spectacular. Washington Duke, as a Methodist and as a man, was a real philanthropist, and I think he passed that down to his children and his grandchildren. He supported not only schools like Trinity College, later to be Duke University, but also Kittrell College, a historically African-American institution. He helped support uh, Watts Hospital, the White Hospital in Durham, but he also gave money to build the Lincoln Hospital, which was a hospital for African-Americans in Durham. He really crossed racial barriers in doing some of that. Part of the reason why Trinity College moved out of Randolph County into Durham was the offer of monies from Washington Duke, as well as offer of land from Julian Carr. Washington Duke's gift of $100,000 to Trinity College came with the requirement that women be admitted as well as men. With that, he made a bold step into providing more educational opportunities for women. When you go to Duke Homestead, you see how modest the home is and how humble the beginnings were. And seeing that just a few miles away from Duke University, you realize what a, an amazing man Washington Duke was and the, the philanthropic legacy that he left behind. Duke Homestead State Historic Site is at 2828 Duke Homestead Road in Durham, and they're open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, give the site a call at 919-627-6990 or go online to dukehomestead.org.